Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video. Over the years of making soap, I have learned there are certain styles of soaps that most soap makers will attempt to make at least once in their soaping career. And that includes things like a Castile soap, a rainbow soap, um, you've got oatmeal, milk and honey, there's black raspberry, vanilla, watermelon. There's so many real classic soaps that everyone likes to have a go at and put their own twist on. And for me today, I wanted to have a go at making an Aleppo inspired soap. Now, if you don't know, Aleppo soap is actually made in Aleppo and they basically, it's very different to how we generally make soap. Um, they still use oil and they use the lye, but it's actually boiled up almost like a, a hot process way of making soap, but it, it's so much more runnier than what our sort of classic hot processing is. Um, if you've not seen them, go and search for it on YouTube and there's some amazing footage of these men making Aleppo soap. And it's generally made with olive oil and laurel berry oil. Now I've put off making this soap for soap long because here in Australia the laurel berry oil is very very expensive and as much as I wanted to have a go at this I it took me a long time to actually bite the bullet and just buy the oil but I finally got around to buying that oil around this time last year and I made the soap again around this time last year and this soap has been sitting on my cure rack for the past 12 months and it is finally ready to actually put out my shelves. So today I'm gonna to show you how I made my Aleppo inspired soap. Let's go. So the first thing I am going to do for this soap, I have got myself a bottle of laurel berry oil, which I've had from Heirloom. This is a 500 ml bottle, but I'm not sure how much there is in terms of grams. So I'm gonna weigh this one out first, and then I can work the rest of my recipe out. I wanna use this whole bottle in here to get the highest percentage that I possibly can. This is a very expensive oil, which is why I've only bought the 500 ml bottle, and that is all I'm gonna be able to put into this soap, otherwise it's just gonna be way too costly. Let me get every single ounce of this out, and oh my goodness, that smells absolutely lovely. It's got this real piney sort of smell to it. Really, really like that. Just cut the top off, because I really do want all of this out of this, um, this bottle just to give you a bit of an idea i have paid 63 dollars for this 500 ml bottle of oil that is a lot of money for only half a kilo of oil let me get this all scraped out all right so i've got 460 grams from out of my container there so now what i'm going to do is work out how much olive oil i need to go in here and i'm also going to add a little bit of castor oil in here as well so the last ingredient i have put into the pot here which i forgot to push play or record on the video camera after opening up the oil is i put some extra virgin olive oil in here the laurel berry oil is going to make the soap go green so i use the extra virgin olive oil to get all of the benefits out of that plus that lovely green color now i'm going to go and get the lye water prepared for this one and then we'll get on to making the soap so I have all of my lye water now measured out according to what I have got in the pot. Now from this point onwards, this soap is going to be very, very simple. I'm not going to add any extra colorants. I'm just going to let the oils talk for themselves and allow this soap to be what it is and just a really nice um, soap for the skin. What I've got in here is a blend of essential oils. Now that um, laurel berry oil has a beautiful piney smell to it. So I decided to keep to sort of those more sort of piney but simple citrusy fragrances. I've got some orange essential oil, some Meishang or let's say Kubeba. Uh, we've got some tea tree oil, some bergamot in there and I also added in just a little bit of the benzoin gum that I have got in just to help anchor all of those fragrances. Because this is going to be such a simple soap I'm putting my, uh, my essential oil in now. I will then blend this into the soap, add in my lye water, and then we're gonna pour it straight into the mold.
have given that a good knockdown because I can see I've got lots of air bubbles in here. I don't usually get air bubbles in my soap, but I think because of how much olive oil was in here and it had to be stick blended that little bit longer to get it to trace, um, I have managed to get a lot of air bubbles in there. But that's okay, it won't actually harm the soap. We'll just trim that down so it doesn't get in the way over on the bench there. Now traditionally, Aleppo soap, if you've ever watched any of the videos, they pour this soap mix out on the floor. Now it's usually a lot thicker than what you see this because they tend to boil the water and the lye together because of the type of lye that they get. They actually boil it for several days before pouring it out onto um, fl factory floors. And then when they cut it, they just cut simple um, square, well, they're usually square or big chunky um, rectangular bars and there's nothing else on them, no fancy tops or anything like that. So I am gonna keep some tradition and just leave the soap as is because this is high in olive oil it is going to take a little while to actually set up and become solid but as soon as it does i'm going to have to cut it quickly so that it isn't too hard to cut so i'm going to leave this one sit overnight and then we will be back very soon and we'll get this one cut up bars very differently to how I've been cutting all the others simply because of how expensive these bars are going to become. This final block that I cut off ended up being a little bit um, a little bit shorter. I think I've kind of forgotten that <laughs> when you do these that the paper has to be taken into consideration. So the mold should have been 32 it, well it is it's 32 centimeters wide so I should be able to get four lots of eight out of that but I forget that there's the paper in there and the paper does take away some of that volume so what I'm going to do is cut this one which was the last one it's a little bit narrower than what these others so I'm going to cut these ones at the three centimeters I should also then be able to get a couple of little sample pieces off here that I will be able to send out in orders this one is smelling absolutely amazing it is really herbaceous um, that sort of piney smell of the laurel berry is coming through and the color of this is gorgeous it did go through a gel this got really 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 hot and I was concerned it was going to volcano on me but I just kept an eye on it and it's um, it went through its ponification process didn't bubble up too much but that is a gorgeous looking bar of soap there that is probably a really big bar as well wow in fact that is a massive bar of soap so i'm going to change my soap cutter down because that bar of soap i'll probably have to sell for about twenty dollars and i just don't think people are going to pay me twenty dollars for my soap bars so i am going to cut these ones down to 2.5 oh instead of three so let's get this one all measured up to where I want it to be all right I'll make sure I've got 2.5 all the way along and is more along the line of my normal size bar of soap so let's get this block cut and then when I cut the other blocks I'm going to be cutting them to two centimeters in thickness and um, just to give us a nice 
size bar that's not going to be too expensive. These ones are going in a part of the luxury range. I've got a little bug flying around here, but they are going to cost more than what the other bars of soap do, just simply because of that laurel berry oil. This is pretty much going to be a one-off soap for me. Um, I've made this soap, it is the beginning of April of 2021. The thing with the Aleppo soap, because it is basically a form of Castile soap, it needs a really long time to cure. So we're looking at about 10 to 12 months for this soap bar to cure out enough so that people can use it without having that slimy feeling on their skin. So there is that one. That one is definitely too narrow. So that may, oh, I think it's about right. Oh, it's very close. We might actually just pop that one to the side and that will become my bar of soap so I get to try this one. But what I am going to do with this one, I'm going to cut this one down to size and that will give me another really nice sample piece. I've got this bug flying around in my face there. So there is that one. Probably not a good idea to put them there because I'm going to knock them with the... Um, the soap cutter. What I'm going to do with these other ones, as I said, I'm going to cut them even thinner. Um, it might seem really cruel, but I just don't think that people are going to pay me um, any more for my niche market of customers. I don't think I'm going to get paid the money that I will need to be charging for them. All right, so I know they look like a rather skinny bar of soap, but if I do cut them any bigger, the price of these soaps is going to have to really skyrocket. And I just, I don't have the niche market to do that. This is a soap that I just really wanted to create because it has always fascinated me. It smells absolutely amazing. I love the color. They are going to go onto my cure rack for the next 10 to 12 months. And you'll be seeing this video towards the end of um, its cure time. So they should be on the website really soon okay so as I said at the beginning of the video this soap is now actually available to purchase through my store and it is rock hard from having sat there for a whole year it was there for a year and one week before I wrapped it um, let's go and have a look at how it lathers up all right, so excuse my mess in the background. I have got a piece here, which was one of my off-cut pieces. Let's get it under some water, get it lathering up. Now, because this is high in olive oil, we're going to get a really dense, creamy foam out of this. But having that little bit of castor oil in that I put in as well is really gonna help to hold that foam. It feels absolutely wonderful so silky smooth and creamy and you can see we've got that beautiful creamy lather going there so it's never going to be massive bubbles but at the end of the day the bubbles do not mean cleaning they usually mean things are clean so um, it's not a bad thing not to have huge amounts of bubbles on your soap so I absolutely love the lather of that soap, how it makes my hands feel as well. When you wash them, they, you don't get that squeaky clean feel, but they do feel clean, they feel nourished, they feel soft. So it's an absolutely beautiful soap on the skin. Um, as much as I love that lather, I am so cross with myself at how I ended up cutting these soap bars. I haven't had that split um, log mold for very long and I hadn't got used to the measurements. I also only had the, um, the log splitter which you saw in the video and it's very restrictive on what sort of sizes I can really cut. Um, these days I now have that wonderful soap cutter from Soap Cutter AU and I would have been able to cut some better sizes in the soaps because it gives me more flexibility. The, I was trying to make these bars smaller than my regular soaps and even though this is thinner it actually ended up being the exact same weight as my regular bars but it's going to cost twice as much. It's going to be a pretty hard sell because um, most customers won't understand unless they know the story of Aleppo soaps, which I will actually add a story onto the shelf about what these soaps are. Um, if I'd been thinking a lot more clearer on the day, I've got a feeling I was sick on the day and I wasn't thinking very straight, 
or very clearly and I probably would have cut these different to make sure that they weren't so chunky um, but it is what it is I am so happy that I did give this soap a go will I make another one I really don't know um, unless the laurel berry oil comes down in price over here I probably won't plus these have literally sat on my cure rack for over a year and it was a whole shelf that it took away so by the time I got around to things like Christmas I constantly ran out of room on my cure rack because these soaps were just sitting there probably if I did get around to remaking them I would probably cure them at my home studio and not in the shop um, to learn from that lesson but I am super happy I gave this a go um, I hope you've enjoyed watching how I made my Aleppo inspired soap if you did why not leave me a thumbs up any comments down below it really does help get the videos out there and until the next video comes out I hope you have a great one and I will see you then bye